Here's another nice experiment you can do with a magnetomechanical harmonic oscillator. So now we've got it set up in, in uh, clock, clock mode. So there's a clock drive signal, which is this yellow trace, and that is being fed back into the drive coil. So every half cycle, the drive coil gets a kick, uh, and that keeps the thing uh, oscillating. Okay, so, uh, and it runs at the resonant frequency of the oscillator. Okay, and that's the yellow trace here. The red trace uh, comes from the signal generator, just a square wave uh, at the resonant frequency. And because the, the signal generator is putting out a frequency which is very close to the resonant frequency, these curves do not drift relative to one another. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the resonant frequency of the oscillator by changing the spring constant. And I do that by running a current through these bias coils, okay, a DC current. So that the current through those coils, these two, produces a magnetic field which is along the axis of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, of the cylinder. Okay? So that produces a torque. Torque is mu cross b, so it's mu times b times the sine of theta, and so for the small angle approximation it's mu b theta. So therefore there's a restoring torque which is proportional to theta, and that uh, gives you uh, a, a change in the spring constant. It adds or subtracts from the spring constant. So here we go. We just put some current into those coils, and lo and behold, the oscillator is now running uh, at a different frequency, running faster. If I change the direction of the current, which I can flip this around, then it goes the other way. Okay, so I can increase or decrease the spring constant. And that's just uh, the spring constant cap I'm adding mu times b. Okay, so, uh, so now what I can do is I can measure the frequency change uh, and from that, get the change in the spring constant uh, of the oscillator. So, so I can measure how the spring constant changes with the current I'm putting through here. And the current from going through these coils from the geometry of the coils and the number of turns, uh, I can calculate the magnetic field. Okay? So the spring constant I'm adding is mu times b. Okay? And I know b because it's related to the current. And therefore, I can calculate mu, the magnetic moment of that magnet. Uh, how do I do that? Well, I start with, uh, I have to know the, the uh, uh, mass moment of inertia of that, of that test mass. And mostly it's due to the magnet. It's a cylinder. And I can tell you the, the diameter and the length of the cylinder and the mass of the cylinder. And for that part, you can look up a formula for the mass moment of inertia. And then you multiply by about 1.2 to account for the, uh, the other parts of the uh, test mass, the acrylic housing and those mirrors, which are small and, and fairly close to the axis. So most of it comes from the magnet. Uh, and that just uh, is something one can calculate. Okay, so we know the mass moment of inertia. And, uh, and then we know the resonant frequency. And from that, we get uh, the spring constant without any uh, fields. If I add the fields, then I get a different spring constant. And again, that's related to mu times b. I calculate b from the current, and then I can get the magnetic moment of that magnet. And just for fun, I can uh, look at that in terms of Bohr magnetons per atom, uh, estimate how many atoms are in that thing. And you'll find it's of order one, uh, which is a good exercise. It tells one a little bit about how uh, uh, permanent magnets work. Okay, so it's a nice experiment that uses the capabilities of, the, of this instrument. Uh, it uses clock drive, uh, precision frequency measurements. We're changing the, the spring constant and, uh, and just measuring how that affects the, uh, uh, the performance of the uh, characteristics of the oscillator. So there you go.